Hello and welcome back to another episode of Abduction. I just learned that yeah, every time I restart the game, it sets the language as you know, it sets it to German. So I always have to switch it. Can't forget, otherwise I'll get German subtitles, which will be confusing to everyone, including me. All right, so we turned on the water, which I guess is good. We also turned on the power last time, which was probably more significant than the you know in the grand scheme of things, but. I'm not really sure what we're doing next exactly. CW's instructions were kind of obscure. I think we're just gonna try and keep working on, on all the little things here. We know that we need to get the the address, the, the number from uh, Farley's house. And uh, what's her name? Car Caroline? Something with C. I think it was Caroline. I'm not sure now. Um, because that's the code for something, some bunker thing. Um, and then, I don't know, beyond that, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure at all. About the dome, about the lasers, about anything. Just, just not sure. <laughs> Maybe let's try and go visit the tree again. I don't think anything will have changed, but maybe. You never know. And then if not, I don't really know. Have you been back here, actually? I'm gonna say yes, but I'm not sure. Oh yeah, we walked through from the other side, though. That chair looks really weird. I guess the light is below me, though, so... I don't know. From that point of view, it makes sense. I can look through here. Mayors, something. Oh, that's the list of mayors, okay. Or, it's not the list, it's a list of mayors. It's not what I've heard of before. Can't really read the names, though. This is still locked. Of course it is. I thought it was not that same door I thought it, it would be. So my 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 map, my internal map of this place has not been entirely accurate, I guess. Not sure what we're doing here. Probably nothing. Let's go and get the the number. Four, the four digits for the code before we forget because who knows when we'll run into that lock that needs the, the code and then I want to have it and we're almost like halfway there anyway so it, it feels like a sensible move to go back back this way and uh, so and it's set backwards so it's C6 6, <laughs> six three, four, one. Alright, and I guess I'll, I'll write down what this is too, otherwise I might forget. I don't think I will, but I might, because there's already a bunch of stuff on this. I should have just used a new you know, piece of paper, but I didn't, so I don't know. This is a locked, I guess. Looks like we would need a key for that. Still, and I don't know... Everything looks weird. I don't know where we need to go, what we need to do. I'm also still really unsure about, like, you know, picking up items. It's something we can do, but it's never really been... So far, it hasn't really been useful to us. I wonder if they can be interactive or not. Like if I can open something I'm holding, for example. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure at all. But I can keep going this way. So I guess I'll just head back. I'm not sure what the next step is. <laughs> I should have rewatched that CW cutscene just 
just to figure out what exactly he was telling me. It seemed like he was like really all over the place though, to me. Wait, has this been opened before? Like this? I don't remember seeing this, but maybe, maybe I have. Maybe the cards are the next step? Maybe not. Why does that look like a leaf? No, it doesn't. There was nothing here, I couldn't... No, I can't interact with anything here. Some item like this pen looks like... I should be able to take it, just, I don't know, based on... Some weird quality about the, the item, but I, I don't know. I guess not. So nothing I can do in the mines, it seems like. All these doors are completely blocked off, barred, so I don't know. Have I ever been in here yet? I'm gonna say yes, but I'm not sure. Yeah, so okay, it's... Is it actually the same tunnel connect like that? Is that the same weird rock I'm looking at from both sides? Maybe. Okay, I am not sure what we're doing next. What happens if we talk to CW again? Is he just gonna tell us the same thing again or is he just gonna ignore us? I wanna know. That's the only thing I remember from this whole speech. It's the red thing, thing. But I don't know how to... Can I even reach it now? Because I can't... I don't think I can use this anymore, right? Yeah, I can't, because the water is not... going this way anymore. So I, I can't get up there. And I can't get out through that door because the, the cards in the way. So I have to move the cards first. But there's no rail there. I don't know. <laughs> and I don't think there's anything new out this way. Maybe maybe there is. I mean... It's possible. It's interesting that you can't rotate it this way. Almost feels like you should be able to. Yeah, I don't know. It's definitely a path on the other side, too. I just cannot get there. I don't think so at least I like this area though it's it's a very nice area I like the river and the sounds the birds it's, it's a nice place I'm very unsure about this thing still because uh, it, it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense and I'm also really unsure about this area because I can't get in there I can maybe open that, maybe, yeah, maybe the code is for that one door where we had the, the number pads to punch in the code, but I don't know. How is this door supposed to work? There's like nothing, nothing there. It's, it's very strange to me. And again, I could just smash a window to get in there. <laughs> like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hesitate. I'm the only guy here, other than Cecil, I guess. But I, I, don't, I doubt he'll, he would mind. I think, I think he'd be okay with me smashing some stuff.
and that's just I mean this tower looks very interesting but I don't know how to get there I do not know what our next step is we stumbled upon this last time basically and that, that really helped us out but from here on out I don't I don't really know I also don't know how we get up there to this tower thing like how do we get up there there's like no there's no way to climb this high unless I get up on this thing maybe I do that from in here that's possible does it have power now uh Okay, that opens that door. So we found that code. Alright, that makes sense. I guess. Since it's the only code we know. But where's this? I thought this would connect back to the other place, but it doesn't. Yeah, my mental map is completely off. One or first seed pair. Second, find planets with similar atmospheres. And then swap. Tree from seed. To the tree, the heart of the tree. The Soraya, which is the Mofang planet, I guess, and Earth. Heart connected path open when mature. Heart superposition. Four species meet. So red is Soraya, and then this is Earth. And then there's two more, green and blue. I forgot the name of the other alien thing. Uh, what happens at fruition? Swap where, home, when, maybe dead. More seed pairs scattered throughout the universe. Why scattering? Hmm. Hard to make sense of all of this. <laughs> That's a really strange looking teddy bear but I like it as character you know it's just almost looks like a like a koala maybe yeah nothing because we have to rewind first good thing we can <laughs> good thing we can record or <laughs> because the button's missing new one 
a new arriver. Oh, God, the kiosk out front. Uh, I need to update that message. All right, I think that's it. I guess we haven't reached the end of the tape yet because it's still praying, but it doesn't seem like there's any more coming. Still, that raises even more questions. <laughs> Who's Chauvar and family? And who or what is Murray? Is it a place or is it a person? They're going to Murray, I think she said. So they, there's an attack. There was a plan. There was an attack that was inevitable, and then they moved the people out. The mayor left first. And then everyone else left except for CW, who's still here. And they went to Murray, everyone? Or maybe not. Maybe there's two different places? Like the green and blue? Maybe that's two different planets? I don't know. I have no idea. I appreciate the effort of, you know, leaving information behind for me, but it could be a little less confusing, maybe. <laughs> oh man. Definitely looks like. Farley had some, has some, let's say, possibly your kids, right? Those are clearly kids' drawings. We have monsters, though. I guess that makes sense, though. I mean, I've, I've drawn some monsters in my days, so... They might not be real. They might be real, though. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know anything about these aliens. I almost looked like there was something, like, below the, the pillow there, but I, I don't know. There's nothing, I think. I'm still really confused about this diagram too. My brother's small and nice, sings constantly. As noisy as a rock concert, if only he would be quiet. <laughs> Some cups. Cards again, and, and, and chips, poker chips? Or I guess, it doesn't have to be poker. It's a nice, it's a nice hand though, a four house. Eights and kings. Uh, welcome to Hunrat. Please give us a bit of information about you so we can get to know you a little better. Name, date you came from, order to the year. Wow. Where you came from, country and city, circumstances under which you were taken. Please note any danger you noticed. Emptied and filed. 12,000? I don't know. AH. Could be like. I don't know. <laughs> 13,000, 15,000. Uh, Samuel Car Karen? There's no S there, right? It's not Carson. January 2017. Man I don't know. Madagascar? 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 How do you say that in English? <laughs> Madagascar. I don't know. I had. Oh, this is hard to read. Just arrived and was. Driving my supply truck along the coast south of Manakara? Manakara, I don't know. When I recall being washed away and the sea appeared. That was 15257 AH. So that's not emptied and filed yet because it's after the last time it's been emptied and filed, alright? Mail 61. Uh, Usiel Regenbogen, 1942, March, Lübeck, Germany, okay. The last thing I recall is a large uh, rambling, rumbling, I don't know. While I was hiding in the cellar of a vacant building, I ran towards the bright light in the stairwell. Yeah, 1942 is World War II. That explains the hiding in the cellar part, probably. Mail 26. That's a weird first name, though. Malia Gallego. Gallego, probably, maybe. Uh, September 1988. Cozumel, Mexico. Mexico. On my boat and bad storm. Very brief. I like it. Concise. Just the... Uh, I mean, that's what the, the thing says to do. The, the form. 
16, 23 AH, fe female 46, and then what's that supposed to say? It looks like a chi at the end. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> J A I N G chain. <laughs> ah, and what's that? Q U. That's I don't know. I'll... Oh, it's a it's it's an okay male. But what's that name supposed to be? <laughs> I can't read that. March of two thousand forty-two, Portland, United States of America. Skiing Mount Hood? Hood? Is that a mountain that exists? I don't know. Male 37. So he's from the future. Maybe they have weird names in the future, but I guess the United States of America still exists, and Portland does too. Alright. So this is like where you sign in. Welcome. Yeah, that makes sense. Can we unlock the door? We totally can. Very good, so we have a way through now that's quicker than running all the way around. Can I turn this on? I can't. Oh, it's like a map, I guess. There, yeah, this is where we are. Actually, yeah, it's better with the shadow. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make sense that it still works, but I... <laughs> I'm not complaining, I guess. Or maybe... Is the protector just doing this part? Yeah, yeah well, wow, this is nice. It's just highlighting something. Whatever. Yeah, this, we've seen the cemetery, we've seen Fadis, we've seen the war, obviously. We've been in town. Entry can, can, uh, Canyon, yeah. Uh, the battery, I don't... What's the battery? The thing up top? Yeah, the thing up top there. We just weren't really sure to do with. Wall source of R, CWs, yep. Tree, the tower. Yeah, seen all of that. The scrapyard is up behind, okay, and that's a surprise. Sure. Breeder, what's that? I mean, I know like it's a thing in the in the lake, but what what, what does this mean? And why is it highlighting this spot right there? In the rail yard. And what's this supposed to be? We'll remember that for later. It's definitely going to be used for information at some point. I just don't know what to do with it yet. Seed information. I wish this wasn't like it's not the the font itself. It's just like it's very. It's like. It's pale. It's a very thin. I don't know handwriting. It's hard to read. Ambassador seeds. Ambassador seeds were first documented about 150 Earth years ago. They occur about once every 400 days if the tree trees remain healthy. Natural seed swaps occur between pairs of seeds that we now know drops sim simultaneously from healthy trees in paired sphere. When each seed was touched by a species in sphere, the swap occurred, sending an ambassador from each sphere to the paired sphere. Okay, so we get swapped when we touch the seeds the drop from a weird tree that connects different spheres. Interesting. But is that how you get here? No, that's just how you leave. Like the sphere is like the thing we're in right now, right? The dome is the sphere thing, right? And we're in this sphere. And if we touch one of the seeds from the tree in this dome, we get sent to a different dome where they keep different species maybe who knows location of the swap is defined by the locations of the pairs of seeds after the first swap the seeds recharged quickly allowing for a quick return first meetings were intense but naturally short it was quite a surprise for both the mole thing and us so yeah so just humans they're getting kidnapped by whatever is doing whoever is doing that kidnapping thing and the mole thing are a different species that's also being held in the dome somewhere, I guess. 
And then Murray maybe the, is another one. Who knows? Over time, the seeds required more time to recharge, producing longer visits between species. Okay. Corrector seeds. Everyone who arrives is familiar with the corrector seeds. Okay, so those are the things correcting us. The bright light that we were all drawn to right before the event that brought us here is a corrector seed. What new arrivals may not be aware of is that these seeds, like our seeds, come in pairs. When the tree drops a corrector seed on the ground, it signals that its twin has begun its quest for a new being. That search may take hours or it may take years. When an appropriate situation, an unnatural threat of death is found, the seed activates and swaps a smaller but varying sized sphere from Earth or whatever appropriate homeworld here to Hunraf. Okay. Hunrat. <laughs> As uh, Hunrat become, became more populated, we would have watch for a newly dropped corrector seed, correct it and place it in the entry canyon area. This allowed us to provide a more predictable entry experience for new arrivals. Okay, that makes sense. And provide a single area to correct any resources that may have come along with the new arrival. All right, so we like we get switched. That's why you know parts of it are really random. The you know the spheres that have were dropped or whatever. That's why I took that table and that lantern with us, which also makes sense. Unlike ambassador seeds and mother seeds, corrector seeds do not seem to survive. The inner core is bent, leaving only the lifeless outer husk. Mother seeds, uh, postulated but unverified, first suggested by Ali Mahamza, 2232 BH, don't know what that means. The notion of mother seeds extrapolates the behavior of the lesser seeds to a super seed. She posited that the process that actually created the paired spheres was similar to all other swaps, but on a much grander scale. Okay, not sure. <laughs> I follow really. The idea is that two seeds from a mother tree were scattered on the gigantic winds to find appropriately similar environments. When matches were found, some process was triggered that swapped large portions of landscape between vast different worlds. I even further noted that the tree's locations in the center of the sphere suggest that the trees grew from these mother seeds. Oh, so like the, the whole the sphere sphere we're in. Okay. That comes from the mother seeds. Interesting. Because of the similarities, it has been uh, conjectured that reswapping the entire environmental spheres might be possible with a larger scale version of the ambassador seed machine. Very interesting and also very confusing and I like it. <laughs> communication, talking with our neighbors. We take communication for granted even with the varied languages we find here in Hunrad, but when we suddenly find ourselves among other intelligent species who don't share our culture, history, DNA or work records, it requires a huge amount of effort for the beginning of rudimentary chatting. This quick overview will set the stage for what, for what to expect when communicating with our neighbors. Mofang. The Mofang were the first non-humans we met. With at least some level of similar physical vocal generating abilities, they picked up human words quickly. This early mimicry resulted in what the species became to be called. Even though they were able to mimic single words and simple phrases that became evident over the years, that huge grammatical differences were not easily overcome. Some have proposed that the difficulty may have arisen because the Mofang insisted on attempting to learn every human language and as a result they were never able to lock onto any consistent grammatical structure. Yeah, that's a bad idea. <laughs> Nevertheless, in spite of the rudimentary sentence construction, it has been very easy to communicate and it has been unnecessary for us to learn the language beyond a few simple phrases and proper names. That's also like a very human thing. You know, they should learn our language. Why would we learn theirs? <laughs> if, if you'd like to learn more about communication with the Mofang, please contact uh, Tam. I almost said ta them, but it's not them, it's Tam. Oh yeah, Vilain. Right, right, right. We remember that as well. 
the villain have presented i don't know how to say that i'm gonna stick with what i'm doing now uh presented a particular communication challenge from what we can gather that they produce sounds using two large reed like structures inside opposite sides of their heads what <laughs> they produce sounds using two large reed like structures inside opposite opposite sides of their heads wow. The vibrations generated are channeled to resonance chambers in their skulls, where they are combined into a complex low-frequency dual tone. The low-frequency bitonal sounds are not only hard for humans to hear and resolve, but impossible for us to mimic. And the lane's hearing is also oriented towards low frequency, so they are unable to hear most of the sounds associated with human speech. Therefore, communication with the lane has relied on technology they have adapted consoles which the villain currently control with vocalization for use by other species over the years some individuals of other species including a few humans have learned to communicate very effectively using this method humans have been able to pick out some high frequency characteristics of certain key villain words over the years and although we can't speak to them in a way that the villains can understand we are occasionally able to hear and recognize these words when spoken distinctly by the villain if you'd like to learn more about communication with the villain please contact Vito all right Making some notes. Arai? Is that what she said? No, it's not what she said. Because the subtitle, right? None of the stages of the Arai morphology have been have any vocalization apparatus because of the obvious synchronization of the barnacle flash and the ability of the pawns to provide for and address the needs of the polyarchs. It was assumed that the species could communicate effectively. It was not until Fali began to spend large amounts of time in the Polyarch antechamber that the first clues to this communication became evident. After months of research, Fali began to have limited success with receiving some kind of simple messages that are coming from the Polyarchs. It is apparent now that the Polyarchs had been attempting to communicate the entire time, but they themselves had been experimenting with various channels until they finally got a response from Fali. After this breakthrough, others were able to tune in to the Polyarchs and learn to listen. Both the polyarchs and the pawns have a simple organ that can sense human vocal frequency, enabling them to sense simple responses from humans. But over the years, Fali was able to learn to speak to the polyarchs via a tr related form of extrasensory transmission. If you'd like to learn more about communication with the RI, please contact Fali. No one's here, though. I can't contact anyone. Let's look at this one, see if it's long. Species description. I mean, yeah, we want to do that next time, though. I don't have time. I, I feel like that takes some time. Let's look at this one page. The entire landscape outside of our circle of desert could only be described as alien, large. Floating rocks could be seen on the, in the distance. No one had ever seen anything like it anywhere on Earth. We fully explored our new surroundings, hoping to find a way home. No way home was ever found. In fact, we soon discovered what we take for granted now. Not only could we not get back home, we also could not access the landscape outside the desert. Curiously, we discovered that the flow of water was provided from a high point of rock, and we discovered a small tree growing in the very center of the circle. Our central tree that is so important to our lives here was just a mere sapling back then. It looks very old, so maybe the, yeah, obviously written by someone who came here first. I would, I would guess. I shall document the curious events that have transpired with myself, my family, friends, and co-workers. Hartnell was a peaceful mining town founded by my grandfather and nestled uh, within the red rock of the desert in in the Arizona territory. All right. So before it was a state, I guess, right? Or is, I don't know, whatever. It's 163 inhabitants uh, heard a 
Mighty Explosion on the night of June 27th, 1903. Okay, so I was a little off. I said late, late 1900s. That's early 20, 20th century. I sent several workers. I sent several workers through the town to verify that the explosion had not caused any injuries or damage to mining equipment. They returned and reported that we must have been. No, that it must have been a loud clap of thunder caused by dry lightning, for they found no damage. It was not until the lights of the next morning that we were amazed to realize something profound had indeed occurred. At some point during that night, our entire mining facility and a large circle of the land around it seemed to have been scooped up and carried off in a completely different place or without anyone knowing about it. That must have been terrifying. I mean probably always terrifying but 1903 <laughs> probably even more so all right so I guess I guess it'll do it for today we'll read this you know oh, it's nice it's it's like I switched the page and it's like I put it down it's on that page. That's a really nice detail. I haven't, I haven't noticed yet. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I was wrapping up. So this is it for, for today, for this episode. We learned some information about the different alien races and about, I don't know, some different things. Um, and how, how everything seems to work here with the three Cs and all that. I'm still not sure where everyone went and if anyone's still alive. I'm not sure if CW is to be trusted. I guess for now we don't really have a choice. Seem to have a shared interest at least, so. Is there something back there? There is. Sneaky. Very sneaky. We'll, we'll find out what it is before we leave. What do I hear? I'm not sure what I'm hearing, but I'm hearing something. Maybe it's just the electricity, but I feel like I hear something out there too. No idea what it could be though. Huh. All right. Interesting. But that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.